there, Mac. Two hours work behind me, and where's that Shemingus? Still in his pit, snoring his head off. He has to rest, Joe. He's still not well. Before his accident, he used to be up at the crack of dawn, working away before the rest of us had even started. <laughs> Could have fooled me the state this place is in. You can't blame Archie for that. He works all the hours there are trying to keep the place going, but it's... It's like uh, painting the fourth bridge, isn't it, Lorna? Well, there certainly always seems to be something needing attention. And if something needs doing, you only need to say to Archie, and he does it right away. In fact, I have seen him sitting in that chair just exhausted just by the work he's done. Isn't that true, Lorna? Uh, yes, I've often seen Archie looking exhausted. Well, if you ask me what this place needs is a younger man, somebody with all the building skills and the energy to put into good use. Somebody like you, for instance. That's not for me to say. I'm happy to be judged by the work I do. Morning, all. Morning, Archie. And how are you feeling today? Hmm? Oh, uh, better, thanks, Euphemia. You can't hurry the healing process. Oh, no, no, you can't. Slept through the alarm, did we? My injury ugh, makes dressing difficult. That's what held me up. Oh, you can see that. Look hmm? at your jacket, Archie. You know, Will I just I do it up one. for you? Yes, <sighs> there you are now. Will I do the collar? Look, would you take it? Oh, I'll put it back. Oh, look at your... Well, I'd better get back to work. Can't hang about here all day like some folk I know. <laughs> I know. Why is it women get all the easy jobs, eh? Don't! Good to see a man that's keen on his work. He'll be a big help to me when I get back into action. Mm. Morning, Mrs. Mike. I'm very busy, Mr. Mortar. I just wanted to return you a copy of the play we're doing. Oh, well, did you like it? A splendid choice, Mrs. Mack. Just splendid. Of course, it'll be over the heads of most of them here, but when I produced it for the Pollock Shores plays, it was universally acclaimed, you know. You're only young once. It's a very good title, isn't it? Yes. And uh, the play itself, none of that modern bad language. No smut. And uh, a message for everybody. I hope that doesn't surprise you, Mr. Mother. No, no, it's just as I knew it would be. No. Oh, but uh, <clears throat> seems to me there might be one wee problem. What kind of problem? Well, only a small one, and I'm sure you'll think of a way around it. I'm sure I will once I know what it is. Well, um, four of the leading parts are for young people, and most of those who've said they'll take part are, well, getting on a bit. Well, I hope you're not including me in that category. No, no. Of course not. Now, snip it. Mm -hmm. There. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, I can easily see you playing, say, the, the younger aunt who's 32, but uh, you might not be young enough, if you'll excuse me saying so, to play one of the teenagers. Mr. Mother, I think you underestimate what a good actress can do if you're skillful with makeup and has kept her heart young. So you're going to play the girl who's just left the convent school? No. I have chosen to play Lady Hermione, a woman of beauty, class, and great understanding. Apart from which you're equally suited, Mrs. Mack, if I may say so. I just can't get over how stupid Jennifer was pretending to be married. Oh, look, Isabel, can you just hold it still? I am, I am. The Tom Fraser. The man she knew could turn up in Akhtan. She must have been desperate, then. Yeah, and I could have looked pretty stupid as well. Going along to sort out Fraser's marriage, but he wasn't even married. Oh, but she didn't, so that's all right. Now, you see, my problem is... Oh, oh silly. Come on. Uh, no, my problem is, should I let Jennifer know that I know, or should I pretend I don't until she gets around to telling me? Well, I should just play it by ear. Oh, thanks, Brian. I'd never have thought of that all by myself. <laughs> oh, no, Morning. sorry. Oh. Oh, sorry, what are you doing, Glendara? Oh, well, I was up having a look at how the new marina was coming along, so... Ah, I just thought I'd drop in. Always glad to see you. Uh, just for a sit on the top. I hear it's uh, dead slow and stop up at the marina. Aye, aye, we may all live to see it finished. <laughs> Tell me, is Fiona still going ahead with this race? Well, the last we heard she was. Oh, it's awful foolish in her condition. Look, I was wondering, could we not put our heads together and come up with some way to stop it? Well, actually, Archie Mingus has a plan already. Oh. Well, he's coming here this afternoon to discuss it. Why don't you come too? 
Why, yes, have lunch with us beforehand. If you'll take potluck. Thanks, Isabel. Potluck here's bound to be better than a bad lunch at the Octave. <laughs> oh, I should hope so. <laughs> See, once you're finished that, I don't suppose you could start in the ferry. Where's Jennifer? She's taking Carden out in the pram. We've got to talk, Sheila. I know. It's not that I mind them being here. In fact, the baby could stay forever. But it's Jennifer faced up to the future. The best thing would be if she went back to her parents. Except that they don't want her back. So she says. You think that was a lie too? Oh, there's no way of knowing. Eddie, you mustn't be too hard on her. I don't want to be, Sheila. But when somebody's told you as many lies as Jennifer has, you begin to doubt everything. Well, there's no doubting that she's here, she has her baby, and their situation is pretty hopeless. So what are we going to do? We've got to try and get her back with her family. Only she and her family can do that. We could prepare the ground, you know. Oh. I'll write a letter to my mother. Well, I don't think Jennifer would like you telling your mother she's here. I'd write a chatty letter and ask casually how Jennifer's getting on. Then we can take it from there. Who's a clever girl, then? I am. And you know, you've done something I thought no one would ever do. What? Found a use for your mother. Oh! Oh, you see? It'll be long enough before that arm is back to normal. Are you exercising it, Archie? I'm trying to, Mrs. Cunningham, but it's not easy. Uh, you'll have noticed what a good workman Joe MacDonald is. Yes, we have. But I'm sure you'd have pointed it out if we hadn't. Oh, I can fairly blow his own trumpet. Yeah. But he's every reason to. He takes a real pride in his work. Mm, it's good to hear one man commend another man's work. Have you seen what he's doing with the ceiling he's repairing? He's made a moulding of the cornice so he can replace it exactly as it was. Now, there's no other man around here with a skill to do that, except me, of course. So why didn't you do it last time you were repairing the ceiling? Ah, oh, well, you see, I, I have so much to do, Fiona. I have no time to display my more artistic accomplishments. No, to be quite frank, there is more work here than one man can cope with. Or two, for that matter. Oh, I mean, there's enough work here to keep three men working easily. So I think maybe the time has come when uh, I could have an assistant. Well, that would mean another wage, Archie. Just one. I don't think the estate can afford that. Ah, but you will consider it? Yes, I'll consider everything you've said. Mm. Was that all? It, uh, aye, aye. Well, uh, I'll get back to what I was doing. Why don't you take the dog for a walk, Archie? You wouldn't really consider taking on an assistant handyman, would you? Mum, if Archie was to do twice the work he normally does, it still couldn't be regarded as full employment. <laughs> oh, you know, this place really is doing you the power of good. You can tell, can you? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're so much more relaxed now. And you know, you've even stopped talking in your sleep. I did a lot of that, did I? Oh, yeah, a lot. What did I say? Um, oh, Sal. <laughs> well, I don't know. I couldn't make it out. But you know, you did seem troubled. Something's troubling me now, Sally. What? I shouldn't have persuaded you to go and see Jimmy Blair. Shouldn't have needed persuading, considering how kind Jimmy was when I was last here. But you were very upset afterwards. I hadn't realised he was so badly hurt. I should have come with you. I thought it might be intruding. You wouldn't have been intruding. I don't know. There have been times when we've been with Snedden and Mrs. Russell. And that time with the Blairs. I've had the feeling that there were things understood between you all that, well, sort of shut me out. You must never feel shut out, Harry. But I do. I think I know now why. You see, when I was in the States, 
I somehow didn't think of you having a life here. It's certainly what I thought. And all the time you were getting to know Glendarroch and its people, and they were getting to know you. And that's why I'm shut out. You and they have a shared past that I'm not part of. I must just accept that. And I do. It was a speech. It was a nice speech. I'm glad you didn't go out riding this morning. Not that again, Mum. You don't know what it's like, Fiona. I know you're a good horsewoman. I know you don't take risks, but accidents can happen. And in the circumstances, my heart's in my mouth until you get back. Sounds a very uncomfortable place to keep your heart. It isn't a very nice sensation. And it's not funny. Well, prepare yourself to experience it again this afternoon. Fiona, do you want to have this baby? I don't know. And what kind of an answer is that? It's the only one I can give. But I do know that I want to win this race. Now, please, can we change the subject? <laughs> I'm glad you find all this amusing. Oh, Mom, come and look at this. Archie seems to have taken your advice. He's exercising. Watching your weight, Mrs. Mack. Oh. I uh, won't be in the manse this afternoon. I have a few pastoral calls to make. Oh, well, I won't go to much trouble with your evening meal, then. Oh, why? I mean, we'll bring out the home baking and offer you tea in our best china. Oh, I prefer people not to make a fuss when I call. Nevertheless, Mrs. Woods makes a delicious Dundee cake. Remember, Minister, that Dundee cake is full of spices and apt to be a stimulant. It doesn't do for a man of your years to get overstimulated, you know. I'll bear that in mind, Mrs. Mack. Hey, Minister, might one of your calls be to the Ramses? No, but I'll look in there if you have a message for them. Well, it's just that I've run into a wee problem at the play I've chosen. You see, there's one or two parts for young people. And you want Sheila and Eddie to take part. What a splendid idea. Well, no, I don't want them exactly. In fact, I have strong reservations about letting them take part. I don't see why. The play has a high moral tone, Minister. With their history, well, I'm not, I'm not sure that I want them to be associated with it. I'm not sure that I know what you're referring to, Mrs. Mack. Then your memory's worse than I thought it was. I am referring to that illegitimate child now being cared for by strangers and to them living in sin for months before they could be bothered to get married. I am also referring to the way they brought about the premature death of Sheila's poor father and forced her mother to leave the village to avoid the scandal. That is a very uncharitable catalogue of their misfortunes, Mrs. Mack. Misfortunes? Then let me add they have been insolent to me, grossly insolent on several occasions, them and that dreadful friend of theirs, Carol Mackay. If your play is as uplifting as you say it, it is... It is a moral classic, Minister. Then haven't you a Christian duty to expose these youngsters to its message? Oh, well, I haven't thought of it that way. I'm sure I have never been one to shirk my Christian duty, Minister. There's also the fact that you can't put the play on without them. You will have a wee word for the Ramses for me, won't you? No, Mrs. Mack. No? I think you should be the one to ask that. After all, you'll be working so closely with them during rehearsals. Look, I am merely trying to delegate. And if you're not prepared to take on the responsibility, then I will find someone who will. Bye-bye, now. Uh, Mr. Forsyth. Oh, Peter. Uh, I hear uh, you've reopened your book in the race. You hear wrong, I'm afraid. Huh? Well, Sneddon says you laid a bet on him to win. Aye. That was before I heard Fiona Cunningham was pregnant. Uh, so the book's closed. I'm afraid so. <laughs> Good thinking, Mr. Forsyth. What do you mean? 
Well, you stand to make a packet out of the folk who have already placed a bet before they heard the news. I assure you I'd rather lose the money for the pleasure of seeing that man Sneddon put in his place. You're not the only one that feels that way. What about you then, Archie? What? Are you one of the unlucky ones to bet on Fiona Cunningham to win the race? What do you mean, unlucky? Well, I thought it was obvious. There's no way she's going to take the risks needed to win. Listen, I'll have you know Fiona is training hard. She's out riding every day and with no ill effects. Well, she's definitely going to go through with it. No doubt about it, son, and she'll win. Maybe it's just as well the book's closed, then. I'll see you. Was that true? Has Fiona been out riding every day? Without fail. And for two or three hours at a time. Oh, I don't like it. Can't be good for her or the child. Well, as a matter of fact, a few of us are just as worried about her as you are, Mr. Forsyth. But we plan to do something about it. Listen, are you going anywhere special? Well, I... Uh... Right, come with me. I think you can help us. Hmm. It's, uh, actually a message from Mrs. Mack of Comworth. Oh, yes. She should have come with it herself, only she's very busy this afternoon. Better sit down, then. Oh, thank you. I don't suppose you remember the Glendarroch Drama Society? No, but I, I heard Mum and Dad talking about it. We used to put on some very fine plays. Almost professional, people used to say. I trod the boards myself. As a matter of fact, I was considered one of their leading actors. I remember Mum telling me how funny you always were. Why are you telling me this, Mr. Murdoch? Well, the Glendarroch Drama Society has been reformed. Uh, Mrs. Mack has chosen her first play, an excellent piece, really excellent. And uh, there are a number of parts for young people in it. She wants me to take a part? She is doing you that honour. Of course, she realises that you've never done any acting before. Well, actually, I played the lead in the school play two years running. Oh, that hardly counts, does it? Still, I'm sure Mrs. Mack's expertise will see you through. So, uh, we'll take the part. Why not? That's good. There's also a part in it for Eddie. Oh, I'll mention it to him when he comes in and let you know. So you'd be able to practice your lines together? <laughs> so we would. Yeah. What kind of girl is it I'll be playing? Oh, an innocent young thing, just out of convent school, pure and unsullied. Mind you, Mrs. Mack had her doubts about your being able to play it, but she we decided... She had her decided doubts, that... did she? Only for a moment, of course. Well, you can tell Mrs. Mack she can play the part herself. She'll look very silly, but at least people will know with a face like that she's never been sullied. When they come to the junction, we see which one Sneddon takes. Then we send Fiona and the box wheeling down to where they join up again. Meanwhile, we send the ringers down the other one. Now, all Fiona has to do is get out the box, canter, and bingo! Now, the outcome is Fiona is the first person Sneddon sees when he reaches the finishing line. That's good, eh? Well, I know it's not perfect, but it could work. It's cheating. But I reckon Sneddon's asked for it. Of course he has. Sorry? Well, it'll need careful reconnaissance and planning. Oh, we'll manage that, eh, bother. Uh, the timing will be tricky, too, to make sure that Sneddon and his stewards don't see the changeover. Oh, well, that's the kind of thing we managed to find when we're ready to the Norlock. The first requirement is to find someone with the same general build and appearance as Fiona. Now, Brian and I are working on that one. Yeah, I've got a list of possibilities. I'll look them over in the next couple of days. Incidentally, you'll need a ringer for the horse, too. Ah, no. That's where we thought you could help us, Mr. Forsyth. Uh -huh. Well, now. I think I knew where I might get one, and it's far enough away from Glendarroch for the secret to be safe. Oh, that's another point. We mustn't have too many people in on it, Brian, otherwise the whole plan could be blown. Yeah, on the other hand, we need a few more than we've got here if we're going to get the timing right. We just have to choose them very carefully. And there is one other thing we'll need. What's that? Fiona's cooperation. I know, but it's best to get all the arrangements made first. Oh! Oh! oh. No. Sorry, Mrs. Mack, I'll serve you now if you'll just come Well, well, well. And what is going on here, may I ask? 
Uh, here, Mother, there's quite a bit of excitement down the road today. Oh, what's that? Uh, the police are back, poking around the place that found that body. I don't know why they're bothering. Uh, it's not just Murray and Big Ears, you know. There's lots of them there. Some of them in clean clothes. And what on earth do they expect to find? Clues, I suppose. You mean like footprints and fingerprints? No, Mother. But they've got to find out who he was and what happened to him. So what clues can they possibly find after 30 years? Well, you, you, you never know. I mean, some things lie around for years with hardly any damage. Such as? Well, there's those historical relics that they find after hundreds of years hardly damaged at all. It'd be a big help if they find a Jacobite sword. It, it could be jewellery or something like that. Remember that bangle of yours that you lost out in the moor? And I found it years later, almost as good as new. Well, things might be different nowadays, but there weren't many Glendarroch men that wore jewellery 30 years ago. That's the first time you've ever said you thought the body might be a Glendarroch man. Right, these three letters can be typed mm -hmm. up and I'll sign them when I get back. And the catalogue can be filed. And that, back into the filing cabinet. <laughs> Thanks, Lorna. Oh, Lorna, how's Joe McDonald getting on? Uh, very well, I think. He seems satisfactory. <laughs> More than satisfactory, according to Archie. <laughs> yes, Archie's very enthusiastic about him. Well, he said as much to me. I'd never have thought Archie could be so magnanimous about someone else's work. <laughs> yes, well, he does have an ulterior motive. He wants me to take Joe on permanently. Well, I know he's been thinking along those lines. Uh, you wouldn't consider doing that, would you? Well, as a matter of fact, Lorna, I'm thinking about it very seriously. Are you, Fiona? Can we afford to? Well, if Joe's so good at his job, perhaps we can't afford not to. It would be a great help to Archie. Well, I'm not so sure about that, Lorna. You see, what I can't afford to do is to pay two men to do one man's work. So I would be taking on Joe in place of Archie. 